Uh, we have Julie Mahler here tonight. She's a registered dietitian from Muckleteal Physical Therapy. And Julie, how are you doing tonight? I am doing great, Shannon. Thanks for having me. So she's, uh, she's a nutritionist, too. A nutritionist. She's that's my right. nutritionist. So yes. I, that's, I, that's a good question. Yeah. So a, a dietitian versus nutritionist, what's the difference? A dietitian goes to school for four years, and then they take a test have to, and do a dietetic internship. And a nutritionist could be your dog, basically. It could be anybody. So are you, would you rather be called a dietitian then? Dietitian would be great. Okay. Nutritionist could be my dog, is that what you said? <laughs> yes, it could be your dog because they need to have no qualifications. But uh, okay. they could have qualifications, you just have to ask. Okay. So what is, what, do you have an area of interest in your practice? Um, you know, I love just to help people attain their goals, their health goals. And so whether it be sports medicine or if they have diabetes or if they have heart disease, it doesn't matter to me. What I want to do is help them get so that they're healthier. They well, I want to talk goals. to you about that a little while uh, yeah. down the road, okay. how people can get in to see you. But starting out, what is the word on grilling? Is it good, bad? What's going on out there? Oh, grilling is awesome. It can be delicious, first of all, and it can be healthy, too. The Probably the biggest downfall that Americans have is they love fatty meats. They like those hamburgers, hot dogs, sausages, ribs, fatty steaks. And those are dripping full of saturated fat, cholesterol, and they're clogging our arteries. But there are some great options out there. Here we go, Maury. Listen up. Okay. <laughs> so, she lost me there for a second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, let's talk about what type of... There are great meats that you can grill that are tasty, too. You can have pork and beef. If it has round or loin in the name, it's going to be lean. Chicken, another great option. And there's light hamburgers or light hot dogs that you can buy, too, and they all taste great. Turkey burgers. Turkey burgers, uh, that's right. Up some of those. Yeah. Veggie burgers. Yeah. That's veggie right. Burgers, yeah. You know what I find? Uh, when We're just going to go through a list right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're list it out. <laughs> when you're grilling the turkey burgers, um, they're hard to grill because they fall apart. And yeah. Is there anything you can do to get the consistency of them so they stay together? Ah. I, I have. I can answer this for okay, you. Okay, there you go. I, I, you can buy prepackaged turkey burgers that they're already in the patties, so they kind of they keep but their you shape. Better check the label, because some of those turkey burgers are adding you're all the skin. Why are you ruining this for me? I'm not. <laughs> I'm having a reality check. Uh, okay. You might as well have the high fat beef if, if you. Can't so, kill. so what you're saying is is buy the ground turkey and make your own burgers that way. No, yeah. I'm saying check the label because oh. it could be turkey, but they could, might have added the skin, which would add all the fat. How would you know oh. that on the label? The label would tell you how many fat grams are in it, and so if it's like, I'm not even sure, but 13 grams or higher, you know, you're starting to get up there. So is that 13 grams or higher per serving? Per three ounce cooked serving, okay. yeah. Is, is there, I have a quick question, is there um, uh, a difference health-wise as far as like uh, charcoal or gas? Is there a difference or it doesn't matter? Oh, you know what? I don't know. That's okay. a really good question. But I did want to bring up, if you use lean meats, you have to marinate them because they will toughen up on the grill. So you And you stab them with a, um, with a fork, yeah. and then you put this marinade in like for one <clears throat> to two hours, and um, that can be really delicious. So when you're talking lean meats, give the listeners an idea. What do you mean? Examples lean of meat. lean meat. Seriously, if it says round, like... Um, oh. Give me, a, or, well, loin, like tenderloin. Tender loin. Ah, delicious. You know, Beef it's like the loin. filet mignon. Yeah. yeah. Um, a round steak, a uh, bottom round. Um, but you go to the butcher, there's tons, literally tons of choices, as long as it has those, one of those names in so, it. So the ones that have a lot of fat on them are like the ribs. What else? Ribeye steaks? Is yeah. That what you're about? They're, um, what else do we have? Prime rib. Prime rib, ribeye, no. T-bone. T-bone. Those are real popular. And, and really the up. hamburger that we buy is yeah. oftentimes the um, higher fat. But you normally can tell how much fat's in a hamburger if you put it on the grill. And a second later, there's like a giant fire going on from all the fat drippings, right? Yeah, you exactly. You lean hamburger would yeah. be okay to... Well, but then Shannon brings up a good point that if you get it too lean, it falls apart. So uh-huh. then what do you do? So you... I think you want to make sure the taste is there. 
I'm all about taste. You want to like it, but then try to. But another way to round out the meal is add fruits and vegetables and grill them. That's what I was going to ask you. That was going to be my next question. What? So what? What good fruits and vegetables? Oh, there's so many. There's onions and peppers and mushrooms, or you can try pineapple and mango. And honestly, they are so good. We all need more fruits and vegetables. Right. And then they taste different on the grill. So pretty much any fruit or vegetable. Yeah, can, try it. Except olives, probably, because they'll fall in between them. <laughs> yeah, though, then you can skewer them. <laughs> oh, you skewer them up. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. What's some? Um, uh, the average serving that American sh- fruit and vegetable, how many should they get per day serving size? Well, that is a great question. The um, Our government had first recommended like five a day, and then we were getting as Americans like maybe an average of one a day. So they upped it to like eight to ten a day. So that makes sense, doesn't <laughs> it? So anyway, if you can get five a day of fruits and vegetables, that you would be doing wonderfully. And, and and you're saying average we get one? One. One point two. One point two. So what are most people eating then? Ooh, a lot of processed foods is my guess. You know, your fast food. And to be honest, that's what's inexpensive. That's what's on sale. So but wow, right now the fruits and vegetables, wow, they're good. So so back to grilling. Yes. I I'm fascinated by the grilling. What's the what's the most common mistake when handling food? I the most common mistake probably like at, if you have people over is keeping food out too long. Uh-huh. If it's a hot day like over 85, which I know we don't get to very often, you want the food only out for an hour. Think about the parties you've been to. Right. And and if it's a more typical Seattle day, 2 hours is fine. Um, but that's when that bacteria starts growing. What if you put food. it in an ice dish? Like oh, a, yeah, ice dish is great. Okay. Um, but you really have to have a hostess or a host that's on top of things right. with that. And then, and then, so, like, if you're, if you're grilling chicken, you bring the, the pan that has the chicken in it, you put it on the grill. When it's done, you don't put it back in the pan, right? You don't, aren't you supposed to rinse the pan? Exactly. Okay. You don't because that if you have a marinade and you have that chicken in a marinade, that's raw meat juice right. in that marinade. Right. So you don't want to be adding anything. You want to get rid of that marinade. And some people put it on as you're grilling it. Is that not a good thing to do either? It's not a good thing because yeah. you're now adding that raw chicken juice to your cooked meat. Uh-huh. But you could but boil you that marinade. The bar- if you do it early on in the barbecue, barbecue and cook and it well cook the, and cook it well then it would be fine that's absolutely right um what, but, what's what's the take on reusing marinade so to reuse marinade you have to boil it is that is that what it is if you boil it then it'll be fine otherwise you throw it away because, because it has just all those nasty bugs from the raw meat yeah you're not supposed to so but you're not supposed to take the marinade and use it as a dipping sauce. Uh, you don't obviously you don't take the marinade and Exactly. And so. If you want to use your marinade as a dipping sauce, save some to the side and then boil it. Well, if you just save some before you if they, if no chicken ever or no meat ever touched it, it. So or no boil it. Right. Yeah. Either way would work great. I'm going to be paranoid going to barbecues. So yeah, I'm going to keep an eye on everything. <laughs> what what in your opinion, what is the easiest and most nutritional meat to grill? Oh, there are so many awesome choices. See, I'm not going to – what I think the best thing to do is find a meat that you enjoy. Let's take pork loin, for example, and then go to the store or make your own marinade. But watch the oils that are in the marinade because here you're taking this nice lean cut. You don't want to be adding all this fat to it. Even if it's canola oil or olive oil, there can be too much of a good thing. So marinate it for a couple hours and then really enjoy it, you know, after you grill it because – delicious so obviously uh, you recommend taking the chicken off the i mean the skin off the chicken then right i do um because it's really high in fat yeah so why not, not just enjoy the and the it doesn't chicken. it doesn't catch on fire that much that's yeah it's easier yeah. to grill for you yeah. then yeah. yeah 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 that's a good point so um any any kind of thoughts uh in in kind of summarizing this whole grilling thing for the folks out there i wanted to bring up cross contamination too so when you have like you know you have your cutting boards i'd suggest having two one for your fruits and vegetables and one for your meats because if you're trying to have one for both things it's just very easy to cut up your meat get it on the grill and now where are you going to cut up your fruits and vegetables and that's a pretty common mistake that people do all the time and they get sick and they don't know what what causes that but yeah that happens all the time doesn't it exactly and and you know 
when did the, all this start? Because, I mean, when I was a kid, we did, people That's didn't right. even talk about this. I we were riding people... our bikes without our helmets on. and, <laughs> and Drinking out of the hose. Yeah, drinking hose, out of the hose. And we riding have, in the back we, of the truck. We didn't have seatbelts in the car. <laughs> and we just ate contaminated chicken and meat. <laughs> Maybe we were tougher. I, I don't know. I was know. smoking when I was seven. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, when did all this start happening? I think we got sick back then, and we just thought we got the flu. I see. So, well, in, real quick in closing, um, what can you do for the average person that wants to uh, get some nutritional information? Do they just call? or? Yes, please call Muckleteo Physical Therapy, and we can set up an appointment, and I can meet with you and figure out um, where it is you want to go, what it is you want to do, and then we figure